Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome uh, to this session. Today we are going to talk uh, about uh, uh, funding opportunities uh, uh, in the green economy. And we will present a bit uh, what we do at European level uh, to fund uh, innovation uh, in the circular economy and uh, green uh, uh, transition. So uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, the speaker today. We have here Professor Fava. Um, he's professor at University of Bologna and president of the Ecomondo Scientific uh, Technical Committee. And he's here to give you a, a brief introduction and a welcoming uh, to our session. Thank you very much, uh, Valeria, for the kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to all of you and mm. very, very welcome to Ecomondo and Key Energy 2022. I'm very pleased and uh, very honored to open this session this afternoon because it's a quite crucial one for what we are doing here. We know that we are facing different challenges. The one associated with the climate change are asking for effective and prompt implementation of what we are discussing here, and in particular the Green Deal priorities, addressed, as we know quite well, to reduce from one hand the pressure on the environment, emissions, pollutions, and from the other hand, to regenerate the ecosystems, biodiversity, soil, water. We need to regenerate those because biomass resources, crucial resources are coming from them. And not only that, we also know that if we are regenerating biodiversity ecosystems, we can also prevent future zoonosis, future pandemics. So it's a double way to go, but surely we need to act promptly. Uh, we need to act working at the territorial level on the different specificities, and this by applying tailored, tailored science-based policies, science-based policies, and of course, research and innovation actions. Uh, we need to also work together. We need the partnerships public, private, institutions, they have to work together. And this is what the Commission is doing, basically, is designing specific strategies, science-based strategies, strategies and policies, but also research and innovation opportunities. They are co-financing research and innovation actions. This is important because we need to have all the interested people involved. And we need the money for anyone to participate. And we need also money for reducing the risk of private sector that are investing. So it's crucial what they are doing here, what they are going to present here. But we need to also include another key partner in our action, which is the citizens, the people. They have to be involved. They have to be involved since the beginning. We need to engage them, asking them also their ideas. We need to inform them what is coming out because they have to adopt every day what has been already developed in the real field. We need to co-design the strategies, science-based strategy that I was mentioning before. They have to be on board. Ecomondo is a fantastic ecosystem. I know it very well. I can testify this is a fantastic ecosystem. You have the public entities running research. You have a large array of companies. You have institutions. You have citizens. You have young people. You have students here, not only from the university, but also from the high school. They are here with us. This is a fantastic landscape in which what you are doing can be really put on place, shared, and start this interesting interaction that should allow to all of us to design a strategic research innovation action policies and so on. 
uh, to have all of them with us, ready to also endorse what is coming out from the research. Very often, we have some innovations, some technologies that the citizens are not accepting. This is happening very often in Italy. We have technologies, but citizens are not in favor because they didn't join, they didn't contribute to the work since the beginning. So this is what Ecomondo can do. And uh, it, it, so I really thank you very much for this opportunity. I simply add that is not only a national Italian initiative, here we are mobilizing about 100 country. So we have people for more or less 100 different countries, mainly from the Mediterranean area, but this is a quite international landscape. So this is also interesting for you because you can go beyond Europe. You can also mobilize actors that are normally very much interested in what you are doing in Brussels, but that are not able to interact with you easily. So thank you very much for this session. Thank you very much for being here with the fantastic stand there, always open to anyone interested in asking information and provide suggestions and so on. So please do it, do it. It's a unique opportunity to interact with the European Commission. Thanks a lot for this. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Fava. It was uh, very, uh, very inspiredful, inspiring. And uh, as Professor Fava said, uh, indeed, we are here to really answer your questions. And now my colleagues will present a bit what, uh, what we do and what are the, the opportunities that are here that you can take, uh, that you can benefit from. So I would like to introduce uh, Francesco Matteucci from uh, the European uh, Innovation Council. We'll uh, explain a bit uh, what the European Innovation Council is uh, and uh, what, uh, uh, what is actually in uh, for, uh, for you. Thanks, Francesco. Thank you very much, Valeria. Thank you, Fabio, for the introduction. I repeat what Valeria and Fabio said. We are here for the citizens, for trying to solve some of your doubts. And the doubts that we cannot solve here, we will be able to solve uh, by, via email. So please don't, don't be shy to, to come to us if you have got some doubts. Just I will start with uh, introducing the, the actions that we are funding through the European Innovation Council saying that uh, there is immediately something that could not be clear, but the EIC, European Innovation Council, is part of EISMEA. EISMEA is the acronym of the merging of European Innovation Council with the Small Medium Enterprise Executive Agency. And so what, uh, what we fund, we fund within the, a, within the framework of Horizon Europe, the key, that is the biggest ever uh, public funded program around uh, research development and innovation that is funding approximately 95 million euros and you see that European Innovation Council is inside pillar three and we have got an approximate budget of 10 billion for the next seven years so it's approximately 1.5 billion euros per each year and we are an agency that has been enabled and has been created starting from the previous thoughts of President Barroso in 2008 when many studies started to call the European paradox. The ideas and the data showed that researchers and scientists in Europe are the best one in the world. But when we have to exploit the research result, and when we have to do so to start bringing one idea to the market and to make the increase of the wellness of the people, because this is the main aim of the innovation, to increase the wellness of the people, and in making this increase of wellness, we make, we make the movement of the money, so we make what is called the exploitation. Here, Europe needs a lot of help, because since 2008, we have seen that we are not the best one. We have to look at the other models in the other continents. And so here I see it's an experiment that has been fully operated recently, all in April 2021. And its idea is really to help through different funding schemes referring only to the deep technologies. 
What does it mean, deep technologies? It is important to say that nowadays it does not exist a scientific definition of deep tech. But I'd like all, I like always to say that the, the clear, in my opinion, the easiest way to look at it is these four lines on the right side of the screen where you see that deep tech means when we want to solve problems, approaching them through a scientific multidisciplinary approach. And obviously, so we want to develop technologies that are high risk, high gain, and normally these are developed inside what was once called open innovation and now it's more properly called ecosystem approach. So if these are the characteristics of your innovation idea, then it's good that you look at the EIC work program. We are the agency that is enabled to do contemporary policy because we write each year our work program and we do implementation. That means that we monitor and we work content-wise with the projects. To go on all the information I will not provide, you can easily find them Googling EICWP, that is the acronym of European Innovation Council Work Program, and every year there is a new work program by EIC. And here you will find all the details on these three funding schemes, because we fund really from the early stage of the idea that we want to, that you want to develop, so that's the call of the Pathfinder, the breakthrough deep tech research idea that wants to become innovation. The difference, most probably all of you know the ERC, European Research Council, we are EIC, where the ERC wants to develop research, EIC wants to develop innovation, wants to make the exploitation of the research result. And then there are other funding schemes, and you can see transition that wants to gap the proof of principle and prototype, so-called value of death, and then there is the accelerator that is the mono beneficiary call that wants to help the small medium enterprise to scale up their technology. You can see from here that we have got each kind of funding scheme has got an open call, so no topic prescription, or a challenge based call. So we identify challenges, defining these challenges, then we want them to be overcome by the wonderful results out of the proposal that when we approve them, they become projects. What we do is we fund through grants, but we also fund through equity. It has been set up in July 2020, the first ever European Commission Venture Capitalist Fund that is managed by EIC. So in the accelerator, you can get the money as a grant, but also as an equity. And we work identifying these challenges through a, a long discussion that each year we have the, with the experts in the thematic areas of the challenges. And so we are also very happy to discuss the challenges with scientists as well as with innovators, as well as with entrepreneurs, and we discuss every year. And then we try to finalize it as obviously everything has to be approved by European Commission as well as by the member states. And we provide as, a, as an agency two kind of help, as I said before, we implement and we do it working content wise. We deal with the content of the projects and we provide two kind of help content wise. The first help is providing recording for our beneficiaries to the business acceleration services that are provided in a different way depending upon the different type of funding scheme you have been funded. So we can mentor, for example, we can help in the case of Pathfinder to explore the different innovation or business models and then to transition and accelerator we help them going to the market. That's the way of things we provide through the business acceleration services. And the second thing is the in-house know-how team of the European Innovation Council that are the program managers. This is, I'm sorry, an old picture because since yesterday we we are in 10, we are no more in, in 9, and you can see that each of us is dealing specifically with the topic. In the case of green technologies, we are nowadays three program managers. I am more focused on materials and devices, and my other two colleagues are more focused on system integration or other kind of devices. And we work in teams, obviously, what we like to say vertically, helping the project, not dealing with the administration or bureaucracy, but really dealing with the how to help scientifically and business-wise the projects. So what we normally do is to work identifying the challenges that I showed you before. These are the challenges process that is managed by the program manager. We are the responsible to promote and 
be approved and get the approval of the European Commission and member states of the challenges. So our first role is to do what we like to call strategic intelligence or innovation intelligence. So we study, we speak with the people, we try to understand where are the most important innovation trends. And the second approach that we do is to work on portfolios. We group the projects and we want to stimulate their working together. So the idea of a European Innovation Council is to overcome the limits of the pure science and to bring the pure science to its application through the innovation. And this can be done through different ways. So we can see different innovation models. It's really difficult, but it can happen that the scientists want to become an entrepreneur, but there are other ways to set up scientific entrepreneurs. So we want, for example, we stimulate the discussion between the different stakeholders, between, between the corporates that may be interested in the research coming out of a lab because they want to exploit it. We try to stimulate the collaboration between the venture capitalist and the financial, let me say, entities, because as European Commission, we also manage the venture capitalists. And so we try really to be the catalyzer, the facilitator of the innovation journey of our projects. And you can see here that we have got different portfolios at different development, what we call TRL. So we want also to promote the collaboration between the companies that are funded at the accelerator level as well as the projects that are funded at the pathfinder level. And these synergies can really stimulate new ideas or can accelerate the coming to the market of the innovation deep tech ideas that we are funding. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh Francesco for this presentation. I would like to ask you a question because uh, the jargon and the structure of this funding might be sometimes a bit, uh, a bit challenging for the people that don't know it. So you were mentioning uh, challenges and you were mentioning a hands-on portfolio approach. Can you explain a little bit more what these are? What, what do they mean? Yeah, thank you Valeria. I will show you an example of a challenge. This is a challenge that was closed last year. The, the Pathfinder challenges on green technology closed a few days ago. We are now starting the valuation. And you see in 2021, we set up the challenges of the green hydrogen or renewable hydrogen production routes. What we did is to evaluate the 106 projects and we funded nine projects. And so the challenge, as you can see here, has got some specificities that we were asking to the projects that were able so to facilitate the evaluation based on this portfolio approach. So the portfolio approach means that we group the projects depending upon the technologies and we work this kind of technologies evaluation depending upon the different type of technologies to produce hydrogen. In this case, you can see that some requirements that we put on top of the challenge were the known use or full recyclability or reuse of the critical raw materials, as well as the system integration and the circular approach. So these were the criteria that helped us in identifying the portfolio. And what does it mean to work with the portfolio? And here you can see the examples of the different projects that EIC was already funding inside the hydrogen and in blue you can see the nine projects that I said we evaluated coming out of this challenge and what we do is we try really to see the synergies so to work in a portfolio approach means really to exploit the synergy that may happen between the different projects and why they do not happen because the, normally there is not the community manager someone that is able to imagine how to connect the different dots and this is something that as program manager we do and we do because inside each of the project we are funding we want the partnership to, uh, to select one portfolio manager. And so each project has got a person that is paid exactly to see the possible synergies between the projects at the early stage of research as well as the projects at the late stage of the research. Today, for example, here at the stand of the European Union, you can see many projects. Some of these projects has been funded through the accelerator. So these are small, medium enterprises developing technologies and trying to scale it up. But 
but they may, be, they may be as well interested in working in a portfolio approach with scientific projects. And so this connection, what we like to say, the ambidexterial approach, that means that each company in the future should be able to look at the short-term strategy. I want to bring my product to the market but also at the long-term strategy to see at the next generation of the technologies that maybe in 10 or 15 years could be interesting for them to look at. Thank you, Valeria. Grazie mille, Francesco. Thank you very much. I think it was very clear. And, uh, and we will have the possibility to ask you a bit more questions about this, uh, either now at this session or later at our stand that is just behind, uh, just behind you. Uh, I'm very pleased now to uh, introduce uh, Philippe uh, Trockman, who is Deputy Head of Unit in uh, CINEA, which is the Climate uh, Infrastructure and Environment Executive Agency. And he will give uh, you a bit of an overview of uh, what they found and how is it uh, structured. Thanks, Philippe. Yeah, thank you, Valeria, and um, um, warm welcome from my side also, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your interest here. Uh, indeed, as uh, Valeria said, I will be take it a little bit broader now than uh, my colleague Francesco uh, and give you just an overview of possible funding schemes of which you could benefit as so I try to put myself in your place and see um, in, in this whole yeah let me call it jungle of different uh, programs that you might have at EU level give you some which might be hopefully of interest for you today and these seven programs that I will present to you in a while have all one common goal, namely to implement the European Green Deal. So they have a common uh, topic here. Um, these programs, these seven programs that I will show you, uh, introduce to you, are all implemented by the um, CINEA agency, which is um, dedicated to that uh, goal, to the it's also known as the Green Deal um, Agency. Um, and before going to the seven programs now in, in more detail, um, let me take it maybe first, and that should ease you the, the, the thing, let me take it from a thematic area. So if you have any projects that relate to climate and environment, or that relate to energy, or that relate to transport and mobility, or that uh, relate to maritime topics, then you might find your program here. Um, in, in, and I would invite you then also to come to see us to talk a little bit more in detail and so that we could show you how, how you could find your way then uh, through these different programs. Um, yeah, those are the seven programs, as I just mentioned. I will take you through them now one by one. Just maybe starting with an overview. These seven programs have a different budget, of course. We have at our disposal for the next seven years uh, not less than uh, 58 billion euros. So you see money is there. We are just looking for the projects and hopefully you will come with your projects. Um, these are, of course, different in size, but that should not be a problem here today. Of course, you find the infrastructure pro uh, projects, which traditionally have always uh, bigger volumes, and you find the more specific programs, of course, which have uh, also um, uh, budget envelopes, which are not that big, but that doesn't say anything on the size of, of a single project, then, of course. Let me start, then, with the first uh, program. Um, that's the... Um, Connecting Europe facility. Uh, that program supports uh, projects in the field of energy infrastructure on one hand and of transport infrastructure. So if you have projects in that field, that could definitely be a program for you. Um, here the, the um, objective of course is on the decarbonization, but also on smarter and safer solutions in the transport and energy field. The next program is, no, sorry, I, I should come back. My colleagues asked me here, indeed, to, to make you aware of one specific program in that Connecting Europe facility um, funding program. It's the cross-border renewable energy um, um, uh, activity, which, and why do I mention it here? Um, it's because there is isn't currently an, a call ongoing, so um, that would be, of course, the opportunity now to, to apply here. Um, that relates to any um, projects that have a cross-border aspect. 
So be it in the field of offshore, onshore wind projects, solar, geothermal projects, ocean energy, all that. So there is something ongoing for that. That's just the message I want to pass here. If you have questions on that, we are, of course, uh, gladly helping you on that. The next program is a quite big one. It's the Innovation uh, Fund, which is a fairly new one. That is a, a funding program that is addressed to uh, private companies that want to implement um, solutions, tech technological uh, solutions, innovative solutions, um, uh, with a low carbon uh, aspect. So the objective here is to uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions in traditional industrial activities. You find here all the uh, energy intensive industries, of course. Um, we look here at solutions in the field of carbon capture, storage, and uh, reutilization. Um, and this is also a program where, of course, we would um, be supporting then uh, uh, technologies which are pretty close to the market and or which should be upscaled to an industrial uh, scale here. We are also implementing as a third program uh, parts of the Horizon uh, Europe um, uh, research program. So here it's all the uh, projects that relate to climate, energy and transport. Uh, that complements a little bit what uh, has been said and will be said by my colleagues here also um, in the Horizon Europe activity portfolio. Um, and voila, next program is the LIFE program, which many of you might know. A very popular program that deals with environment, uh, environment and climate action. It just celebrated it uh, 30 years, so that's a long-standing program already. And those ones support projects in the fields of nature and biodiversity, circular economy, so that's really at the heart of what uh, this, um, this event here is about, uh, climate change miti mitigation and adaptation, and clean energy transition. Then we have also the European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund. So that's, in simple words, uh, all the projects that relate to the blue economy. Here as well, uh, it's about implementing the, the uh, policies that exist at EU level. And um, here it's about sustainable fishing and um, aquaculture practices. So if you have projects in that field, you would also find uh, your, your way um, here to uh, European funding on that. Last but not least, there are two programs, but I will not uh, stay too long on those ones because they are more addressed to public authorities. So there is a program that supports the just transition um, towards a low economy, um, low carbon economy, where um, public authorities will have the possibility to ask for support in uh, most affected regions that have economically difficulties to follow up with the low carbon technologies. And last but not least, there is also a further program, again, addressed to uh, rather public authorities uh, which target the renewable uh, energy um, technologies and, uh, again, help to implement the European Green Deal. So that's in a nutshell, very short now, the seven programs. If you find something on that, we are pleased to help you further. So you find us just in front here. Um, and we would then help you to guide you towards the most appropriate program that that could uh, be of interest for you. Don't be afraid, money is there. Um, it's, it sounds always complicated, uh, access to EU funding, but you will find out it's in practice much easier than you, can, th than you would think. And there is a good website, uh, which I can uh, recommend to you, where you will have an overview of all ongoing projects, of all ongoing um, calls that you um, could apply to. And um, voila, and you can just uh, then put the, the thematic area that you are most interested in, and that would then help you to find also the, the appropriate program. I will stop here and leave the floor then. No, or there, there might be. Yes, thanks questions. a lot, Philippe. I have just one question. Um, so you said that there are 58 billion euros available for uh, research and innovation. Is there also an instrument that focuses more on investment, on the investment side, and uh, an advice uh, for uh, companies that want to green their investments? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, um, the 58 billions that I mentioned 
is indeed funding of, of projects. What we also do, that's a fairly new activity, and those of you who had the chance maybe to assist to the launch of that activity, we are also providing advice. So not only funding, but advisory services that uh, try to help to implement green investments and to make your investments, if you have any um, ideas, if you have any projects, if you have any investment plans, to make these greener, to help you in your business uh, plans, to help you in your due diligence, uh, to show to, them, uh, to investors that your projects are really fulfilling uh, green targets. We are since yesterday providing indeed uh, the green assist advisory services which complements to some extent indeed the funding programs that we, we offer at CINEA and which um, somehow should help you to make this very last step in, in making your projects attractive and appealing for the financial actors. That's indeed a good point. Thank you, Valeria. Thank you very much, Philippe. Very clear. Um, I would like now to introduce our uh, next uh, speaker. Giulio, Giulio Pattanaro uh, is a research program administrator at the research executive agency, REA, that you can also find at the stand here. And he will explain a bit, uh, he will focus more on one uh, aspect, uh, uh, one program of REA that is more relevant to this event, which is Cluster 6. So please, uh, uh, Giulio, the floor is yours. So good afternoon to everyone. Indeed, my presentation in comparison to the previous one will be really focused on a particular part of uh, the Horizon Europe program, Cluster 6, because that's the part that uh, is of more interest, uh, I mean, among the, the, the part of the Horizon that we manage at the Executive Agency for Research. This is the one that is more, voila. <laughs> Does it work? Uh, this is the part that is more relevant uh, for for this fair and uh, I guess for the target audience here in the room. So just a few words to start uh, on uh, who we are. I mean, um, REA is uh, one of the executive agencies like uh, CINEA and ISMEA that you just heard of the European Commission. We are in charge of implementing uh, the Horizon Europe program, but also previous program, the previous program Horizon 2020, and some other programs that are less relevant for this contest, but like the Research Fund for Core Steel and the Promotion of Agricultural Products program. Um, our core business indeed is Horizon. As I said here, I will go very briefly, but just uh, to mention, I mean, uh, in the executive agency and the, uh, at REA, we manage different parts of Horizon. And um, so pillar one, excellent science, uh, these are the first parties more for individual um, uh, mono-beneficiary grants. Pillar two is the one where I will focus, which is about the global challenges. And here you see three clusters that we manage. And among these three clusters, uh, you see cluster six, food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture and environment, where I will focus in the coming slides. There are also two other parts of Horizon, a bit more specific, the widening participation, the reforming and announcing of the European R9 system. That, I mean, if you want to move more information on that part, we are at the stand that we can provide you. Um, as I said, uh, I will focus on cluster six. Cluster six is a big thing within the agency because it's a big cluster. We're talking about around seven billion euros. We are three units dealing with that. This is what more of, a, if you want, internal cuisine, like over the organization. But I still wanted to keep these slides to tell you that uh, the cluster six is a big thing. So we, there's a part more on uh, focus on agriculture, a part on more biodiversity, and the third part more on the um, agri-food promotion, environmental, sorry, environmental observation. And uh, I want to say with this here also that the unit that are dealing with Horizon Europe have not forgotten <laughs> Horizon 2020, which is the program before. So in each unit, we are also ensuring the follow-up and the links between the project. As uh, Francesco was saying in his presentation, it's very important to have clustering and uh, portfolio projects because these reinforce when you apply your, your also impact in terms of project if you work with other projects that are uh, funded in the same area, and this is what we try to ensure uh, also through the organization of our agency. This is a 
this is a slide that you've already seen three times up until now. Uh, so this is the structure of uh, Horizon Europe. I will skip it. I will go very quickly. So I, as I said before, cl cluster six, we are under pillar two. Uh, this is the part of the program which is uh, focusing on the global challenges and on the need to develop uh, um, if you want collaborative solutions to tackle these challenges. As Professor Fava said at the very beginning that uh, when we fund research, we need to not just develop uh, a technological solution, but we have to make sure that uh, the solutions are accepted and adopted, accepted by the people, adopted by the market, uh, um, and by, by the public authorities, etc. And this is really the part of Horizon where we try to, to get this, let's say, uh, cooperative process uh, to, uh, to tackle global challenges up. And, uh, as I said, there are like six clusters under Pillar 2. And uh, you see, I mean, for, it's important just to, for, the, for, the, for the old picture to, to also report the other five clusters. But uh, the cluster six is the one where I'll focus. And uh, here, under cluster six, let me, let me tell you something. And I, I apologize in advance if maybe, I mean, the next couple of slides may look like a, for you a bit more like, mm, let's say, I wouldn't say boring, but I mean, so with some terminology. But uh, there is a message that uh, we want to pass, a strong one here, that research and innovation funding opportunities they are closely linked to uh, policy priorities, okay? It was also already mentioned by my colleagues before, the importance of the European Green Deal, etc. And also Professor Fava said at the very beginning, we have to make sure that with the research and innovation, we are funding solutions that are in line and consistent with the project, with the policies of the EU, and that are also contributing to improve these policies. So. When you talk about cluster six, I mean, this is the big policy uh, initiative which is behind it, the European Green Deal, which consists of several parts. I mean, uh, I don't want to mention, but I mean, the farm to four part, the zero pollution part, there is the climate pact. So several, several policies areas that are all um, contributed jointly to uh, make Europe, uh, I mean, greener, um, and more sustainable. When, um, so these are the boring slides, <laughs> but uh, that's very important because, I mean, there's another thing also. This terminology that you find here, you will find within the text of the call. So it's important that, uh, I mean, you, you pay attention a little bit to, to this language. And um, so I mentioned before in the previous slide the Green Deal, which is the, the broad policy initiatives that from which cluster six originates. And here you see a little bit how the Horizon Europe uh, program and cluster six are, have been um, designed. So as I said, research uh, activities needs to be like, needs to contribute to the EU policy priorities. So on top, you see like uh, EU policy priorities, they set the scene a little bit. They give the strategic orientations they call for impacts, and with your projects, once you apply, you will apply, you will be apply asking to uh, meet, to reply to some, uh, um, let's say, expectations on our side that we call expected impacts. And expected impacts are what we really, um, I mean, it's the, if you want to make it simple, is a translation of the policy priority into concrete deliverables into concrete results. So your project outputs at the end are closely linked to the policy priorities. This is what uh, this slide want to outline. Next one is even more uh, technical if you want, but still, sorry for spending like uh, time on that, but uh, th it's very important that you understand the intervention logic BI, what we call intervention logic. Basically, if you, you can call it the rationale or whatever. I mean, the reason why it is important uh, for your project to be always keeping an eye on the broad picture, which is the, um, the policy, the Green Deal, and the other pro policies which are like uh, at the basis of uh, f uh, funding in the area of the environment and eco-innovation. 
Um, this is the translation, in fact, of, um, of what, I, what I've just said until now. So basically, uh, as I said, policies, they define uh, policy, sorry, they define impact, so our expectations. Under cluster six, there are six main impacts. They concern different areas, from climate neutrality to uh, food security, to um, circular economy, etc. These impacts have been translated in destinations. And why it is important that you keep an eye on destination, because when you apply, you will apply to proposals that are divided uh, by destination. So when you look at cluster six, you have seven destinations. I would say that the most relevant for the audience of this fair are destination three and four, but all the others are also relevant. So keep, a, keep an eye on these. Destination three is circular economy, bioeconomy. Destination four is about the clean environment and the zero pollution. Before going to one concrete example of calls to guide you through the program, also let me know that here we are presenting cluster six. There is another new part of the Horizon Europe program, which, is, which are the missions that are also very relevant. They, have, they are separating the work program. Once you open it, you will find a session, a dedicated uh, section on that. Uh, I would say like there are two missions that are particularly relevant for, uh, very, very, very much relevant to cluster six, very, very relevant for the audience here, the ocean mission and the soil mission. But I would also say when adaptation to climate change and the smart cities are also relevant. So don't forget to keep an eye also on this part of the program. And uh, also, um, let me, I mean, the, the colleagues before, they mentioned several other programs. And uh, when you apply, also keep an eye on the other programs that are there all related in a big family of the uh, funding from the EU. Keep an eye on them. Sometimes even in the calls for proposal, you may be asked to make links. So don't forget the broad picture. And now I call it like a RNI in support of policy. I wanted to show you how in concrete terms calls uh, work. So here with the horizon with the cluster six, you will find three types, three broad types of actions. Research and innovation actions. I said they are more research oriented. Uh, than the other one. They have a funding of 100%. You got the innovation action that have a funding of 70% for most of the beneficiary with some ex exceptions. And then there are coordination and support action. I would skip the last one because they're very specific and you can always ask for details later. But in concrete terms, so you got this, let's say, let's focus on the first three type of actions. You have these three type of actions RIA, e and CSA. When you open the work program, you will find these actions as an instrument under the calls. And here you see the concrete translation of what I was saying before, the contribution of uh, calls to the policy priorities. For example, here I put, uh, I highlighted a little bit of the zero pollution action plan, which was one of the big initiatives under the European Green Deal. We are in the context of destination four. So you see here calls that are really um, tackling the objectives, I mean, the, the challenges and the objective of the Zero Pollution Action Plan. So just, it's just to give you an idea of how the work program is structured. You may wonder why am I just mentioning calls from 2022 year, simply because new calls are not published yet. Here I put another example of the calls uh, of cluster six that relates more to the circular economy action plan. What uh, it is very important to highlight, yeah, if you, if you want, I mean, I don't want to spend time on that. Uh, you will see, I do, they are just examples of, uh, of course and how they contribute to, to the policy initiatives. But the main message I want to pass at the end of this presentation is, okay, as, as I mentioned, these are called from 2022. There's upcoming opportunities. The new work program is about to be published. On the 13th or 14th of December, we will have our info days for cluster six. So the new course will be presented. You will get the opportunity to get more details on that. On the 19th of December, there is a brokerage event. And this is a very important uh, 
initiative for those of you who of, of are looking for partners, because the purpose of brokerage is really like to get in contact with partners that are interested to apply to your same call. And let me also mention a last, uh, last slide. Um, another opportunity for those of you who are coming from research centers, like of strong, or also entrepreneurs that have a strong background on, uh, on the areas that are of, of relevance for, um, for cluster six, but this applies also to the other world program. Don't forget that you always have the possibility to work as an expert for the European Commission so to help us evaluating the programs, monitoring the grants. So this is the link you find here. Don't forget, this is an, an also an opportunity of interest. And also, I, I want to, to, sorry, to conclude, I take a, a couple of extra seconds, a message that I want to pass. Don't think that this is just for academics and you know, research organization. Also, business uh, entrepreneurs, business people that have a strong background apply to become an expert and apply also to, to be part of grants. So that, that's very important. So thank you very much. Here are lots of links to, to get more info. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Giulio, for this uh, detailed presentation. So here you have uh, all the information you need uh, about uh, Cluster 6 of Horizon Europe. Uh, maybe now, because we are running a little bit late. Sorry, sorry my fault. <laughs> um, I would just uh, like to open the floor and maybe take one question from, uh, from the audience. If there is, uh, there is one burning question, uh, you have a person here, just uh, uh, put your hands uh, up and we can take one, uh, one question if you want. There is uh, one person here, just uh, at the front. The and if you can just uh, briefly just say who you are, what's your organization, and uh, for who is the, the question. Uh, uh, my name is Mizano Roman. I came from Bolzano, uh, uh, north part of Italy. And my company called Eero Renewables SRLS. Uh, now we are working uh, at the beginning stage uh, for a hybrid renewable project in Bangladesh. So the project is uh, wind, solar, hydrogen, and value-added hydrogen. That means ammonia or uh, CH4. So uh, my question is, uh, for do you uh, give financial support for external pro uh, projects from Europe? And if yes, then how is the grants and how is the principal financing? Thank you very much. Somebody wants to take the question? If Julia? Yes, sorry. I will reply for the part of uh, uh, Horizon Cluster 6 uh, and, and for the grants in Horizon also, when this applies also to Cluster 5 for the colleague. Yes, you can apply and we are also encouraging international cooperation. Bear in mind a couple of things. Uh, to, um, that still you need to have in your project three partners from uh, uh, European countries or associated countries. So your participation as, um, uh, for example, if, if you have a Bangladeshi partner, they, they can join the consortium, okay? But you need to have still three entities from uh, EU and member state. Actually, in the case of Bangladesh and several, uh, world um, economies, with the exception of uh, China, US, Canada, like um, South Africa, Brazil, you are also entitled to full funding. So that's, that's a very important thing. Uh, try to focus on the calls where international cooperation is encouraged, because that's, there are calls where it is explicitly mentioned, this aspect is explicitly uh, mentioned. But also don't, I mean, also apply for the other ones where th there's no mention of international because it's still something that adds value to the project because uh, in general, I mean, the, the colleagues will confirm. I mean, one of the purpose of the European Green Deal is also to make uh, Europe a strong leader in the green economy worldwide. So everybody is happy when a European project also wants to, you know, to, to extend the output beyond Europe. Okay, and just to complement um, what was said, 
if I think of the innovation fund, for example, the one that I briefly presented, there is indeed a condition that those projects must be implemented within the EU. So that's that's important. It, um, and um, as, a, as a precondition to be eligible to get the EU funding. Something on your side? For what concerns Pathfinder and Transition, the rules are the same that Julio said. So they are the traditional one of Horizon Europe. So you can apply and it's uh, uh, stimulated to, uh, to have international collaboration. For what concerns the accelerator, so the small, medium enterprise mon mono beneficiary call, it is the same as Philip said. The head, I mean, one, uh, one headquarter of the company, also a small, medium enterprise, has to be within the European borders where you have to spend the money. So the people and the infrastructure or the technologies that you will buy will have to be used within the European Union borders. Thank you very much for this. Uh for these answers. I think because we are late, uh, I think we will uh, stop here for the question from the public. But please ask all your questions to the people that are at the stand. We've been here for two days. We'll be here until tomorrow. We have projects. Uh, we have uh, experts on the different funding programs. So please ask your questions on specific uh, uh, projects or bigger questions on how the programs work. Maybe just one last uh, thing from the speakers. A key takeaway for the, for the audience here. They usually say that it's complicated to access European funding. One uh, advice uh, for the people here of what they can do to understand uh, how to access this funding. From my experience, I mean, I come out of the European Commission as program manager. We stay here for a limited amount of time. So up to two years ago, I was on the other side. I was applying. And what I've learned being here in European Commission is that uh, we, you do not really have to be shy to ask to your national contact point or directly to the reference person of the call, what are your doubts? I mean, obviously, they will never be able to answer you on, on the technical dubs, or on the le but on the legibility dubs, they can answer. And the second advice is really to look and really re carefully read the calls, what it is written to consider, I mean, the partners, uh, the excellent science, and so the evaluation criteria. And last but not least, have a look at the internet site www.cordis.europe.eu where there are all the listed projects ever funded by European Commission. So you can see how they work, how they also implemented the strategy, and this can facilitate when you write your proposal. Okay, um, I think it's, I can only echo what um, uh, Francesco said here, it's not, as I tried to say, it's not that complicated um, to access European um, programs. Funding opportunities are there, money is there, that's very important to know. What we need is your projects, so please don't be shy, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. It can be today here, we are glad to have a, a personal discussion with you and to guide you. I admit the first step you will do is maybe a little bit difficult because there are so many um, uh, funding opportunities at EU level, but you will very clearly see once you have your thematic area and what, when you, that you know what, where you want to go, then we can very quickly guide you to, to the appropriate program. That should not be a problem. And my personal um, advice, uh, please keep on innovating, keep on doing research, despite the fact that maybe the economic situation right now is, is not easy. We fully recognize that, and we try to reflect that also in our uh, availability to provide EU funding for you, th so that you can go on with your innovative projects. Thank you. Well, <laughs> you said already everything. Really, as I would say, like spend time in asking people, use opportunity like this one to get in contact with potential partners for your projects. If you intend to apply for collaborative ones, one, one, one partner is not a, uh, enough, so you need to find at least other two. Uh, so use these opportunities and uh, yeah. And also check within your organization, sometimes those who are a bigger organization and try to con co uh, contact the colleagues that have already been part of previous projects. 
Many thanks. Thank you very much to our uh, speakers. Uh, thank you very much to the people that uh, stayed here to, uh, to listen to the different opportunities that are there for you. So please take advantage, benefit from it, come and visit us and uh, check. We are online, we participate to events. So we are really open because we want to unlock the possibilities that are there for a green uh, ecological transition. Thank you very much.